How do you say it? Like? D-U-E-R-S-T. Did you remember Durst is the worst? <laughs> Durst the worst, bitch! Durst the worst, bitch! Durst the worst, bitch! Here's what we're doing. We're taking white liberals. I'm doing this. You're what? We're gonna... We're taking the people here, a lot of these people, I'll bring you aside, you know, Michelle. Yeah. I take care of a 75 year old Jewish woman. Michelle's her neighbor. So I've known Michelle sure. for 25 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to take these people from the Upper East Side, Shoreburn, White Dish Bay, Fox Point, Bay Hartford, Side, Glendale, Hartford, and we're going to sell their homes and we're going to go to the inner city and buy them homes for a quarter of the price, twice the size, quarter of the price, so that they can take the other money and buy homes for other African American families. Would that be okay? We will. We're going to mobilize everybody in this room to do that? That's immigration, right? That's multicultural. They should immigrate. They well, should leave here and go to the inner city. You know, there's been, I was looking about, you talk about some of the facts that have sort of, I think there are, there are facts that are floating out there that might have been kind of like lefty conspiracy facts like 10 years ago, but now there are facts around that are just like sort of like in plain sight. So like for example, wait for example, ahead, ahead, for example, so like where I live in Shorewood, uh -huh. um, there was a racial contract in my subdivision. So like these neighborhoods are formed by uh -huh. a developer who built a subdivision. Okay. There was a racial contract that said no African American could live in that subdivision unless you were the servant of the of the owner of that of, of that white uh, owner. Are you saying this included Asians and East Asian Indians and Jews? This I don't think Jews. I think Jews would probably just have been okay. People. Why is I, that? I, I think Why is I, that? it might have been it's Indians. Which just crazy. It's Hart, crazy. Hart, Hart, well, I'm, I, was, I almost got up and said, "Well, I'm from Hartford." Yeah, I know. I am Hartford. Yeah, Hartford was kind of sure, We don't have any of these problems. A compact where taxpayers have to subsidize real estate developers well, building well, condo towers that take away the there's, value of their single-family homes through tax there. incremental it's financing and block grants. So, I mean, there's all kinds of bad real estate deals going on. There's, there's, a, there's a lot. There's but, a lot. but at least, were, but, I mean, since the 60s, they haven't been racially discriminatory. They've just been, I don't know, just been bad. Well, there's a lot of things that are racially discriminatory. I mean, what, why is it that it's, it's easier to enter a University of California uh, university as someone of African heritage than is as someone of, like, East Asian heritage? That's racially discriminatory. There's at a Har lawsuit yeah, going at on. Harvard, at Harvard, there's a class action yeah. lawsuit, yeah. too, yeah. for uh, Asians as well. Yeah. So yeah. why don't we talk I about... Issues, I think these are complicated issues. Seth, Seth? Yeah. I'm pissed off at the NBA. There's not enough... Yeah, wait, Lithuanians. Wait a second. 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 The NBA Dream Team, All-Star Team, only beat Lithuania by a few points. Those guys weren't in the NBA. Yeah, so, so why is there a draft that keeps me from just buying all the Lithuanian blonde guys from Lithuania and putting them on my Cincinnati NBA franchise? Yeah. If they're almost as good as the top NBA players, why are they making $200,000 a year playing in Israel and Turkey and Italy? Why aren't they in the NBA? That's another question. That, but that, if it's a meritocracy, if people want to... Seth, the, the panel <coughs> speak didn't address that, did they? They didn't address why the... The Lithuanian why? basketball players? <laughs> but, so we have but, to have but, another panel. Yeah, we have to have another panel. Yeah, yeah. As good as the best Absolutely. NBA players, almost. So were the Argentinians when they what? beat okay. them. So why aren't they in the NBA? Seth, let me answer okay. this. All right, this is the last one. This is the last one. I've got to get back to my family. Okay. So I come here, and I see the sea of white. Okay. This is a diverse group. White. Can me? This was like this was probably twenty percent. He has to apologize for how he has to apologize for how white it is. I don't think it was twenty. I'd say seven percent. I would say it was not uh, represented by his political views that much. I'd say he was he was as diverse as you'd think. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a straight white heterosexual conservative Republican male. I'm not an apologist. I'm kicked out of coffee shops for wearing a Trump shirt. Okay, and for being a chauvinist. Anyway, the point is <laughs> is that you had a panel of three. Right away, started off with a lie. Trayvon Martin was a victim. Trayvon Martin tried to beat that guy's butt because he thought he could get away with it. It was angry. George about Zimmerman him. was losing a fight. And he had the legal right to defend himself from an attacker. That doesn't, that makes no sense. That's the an awful law. You've never, how many times have you should allow him to beat him to death? If you were being beaten, that's hilarious, up, I would dude. want you to shoot the person you, who's beating exactly. him. Exactly, come on, man. I've been in a fight. There's a huge gap between getting beat up and like. He was like bashing his skull into the pavement. to the skull. 
is, can be fatal. Look at all these guys in the US. We have, but we have no so, idea. So, we have no idea yeah, like how that exchange happened. We Ferguson know that he was losing after. a fight and shot the guy who was being. Mm. If you were being beaten up, I would want you to shoot the person so, who was trying to kill you. So why is he following him in the first place? Why is he Doesn't like he tailing? That's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Doesn't seem relevant to me. Well, first of all, he has a right to go. It seems like provocative. I'm following right. this gentleman home. He can turn around and say, why don't you get away from me? And I'll get away from him. And how him. do we know Trayvon didn't but do that? But he have the right to attack him. But, we, don't, but, we don't have because a, Trayvon Does he have the right him. to assault the guy following him? No, he doesn't. Okay, but well, we don't have, <laughs> but we, how do we I know that? Is that on video? But, how, but how do you... Is it testimony. That's George Zimmerman's Zimmer, testimony. But well, how did he get all beat up? So Zimmerman may have... There may have been a struggle, but it doesn't mean Trayvon Martin but, 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 turned but, but, around and But he was punched in his car. No, you're thinking of Darren, Darren Wilson. No, no, no. Tr Trayvon Marson er. attacked George Zimmerman while he was still in the vehicle. Oh, really? Yes, he's Darren Brown. No, no. Michael Brown, Darren Wilson, I think but, you're but, talking Tr 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 about. Trayvon Martin attacked George Zimmerman while he was following him in the car. I, I don't think so. I, no? I, think it, I think it was on foot. I think it was through Either way, it was self-defense. Either way, you don't have the right to attack. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that he has a legal right. And I'm going to tell you something else. If this was the other way around, and George Zimmerman was on top of Trayvon Martin, and he was pounding him, and Trayvon Martin pulled out the gun and shot him, this would have never made the news. It would have been white man, and he wasn't white, he was his man. Yeah, he was Latino. White man. Too. If you know what I mean, get shot and killed after a racial attack to black you. There's the double <coughs> standard in all this. I Look at Michael Brown. We took like our many African people. Like I said, too often, I apologize. But if we would have told the police, I, I, I didn't, I the lies are infuriating. And doing that, I, 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 I ostracize from I, African No, African I apologize for bursting out. That's true, right? But but the that lies happened. are very, very so infuriating. So we're living a lie. This is a lie. I, 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 can't, lie. I can't believe you call it all a lie. Like, you don't think there's any discrimination? Against no, black no, 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 no. Let's say there is. Let's, 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 let's just say there so is. Okay. Why isn't Black Lives Matter complaining about the seizure of Afrikaner farms in the Transvaal? Yeah. But, but the, those arguments are like, those arguments Zimbabwe? are different. Like you, they're gonna, have, they're trying to look it's a for black justice for themselves. You can't, they're but, killing but, white people because they're white. And they've and the been there since the 1600s but, before the Bantu expansion. But the Black Lives Matter movement is a it's a U.S. it's a U.S. And they're well, complaining about, about Jamaica. If they're, yeah. well, there's more black men being killed in Jamaica per capita than there are in the United States. I, but I, I don't know that they're I don't know that they should be on the hook for movements that they're not a part of. But why is there no, all this corporate should, money this is, funding all this Black Lives Matter movement in the United States? For what end? If they're concerned about black people being murdered, why aren't they in Burundi and Kenya and Johannesburg and Jamaica? Where on a per capita a basis is much more dangerous to be a black person. Maybe you should join the movement. Why aren't they talking? Hold on. Why aren't they talking about the fact that in Milwaukee, eighty percent of the homicide victims are black men, overwhelmingly shot by other black men? Why do they pivot? Why do they pivot to white on white crime when that's the fact? I think that there was some. I think that there was a. I thought the most helpful response to that, and I think you're right to be able to name that. And it's it's infuriating, and they're gonna, they're going to call it white fragility. That you know, it's like no, it's because I'm stating a fact so in the face fact. of it, lies. It's a fact, but we are getting. Uh, Irritated by it, you know I what I mean? It. I get it, man. I get it. So we, so, so the deputy district attorney, that guy right under John Chisholm, the district attorney from Milwaukee County, goes to this church. He's done forums, and so I thought the most helpful response wasn't to pivot to white on white, um, wasn't to try to to wiggle out from under the statistic because I think it's just fact. But the most helpful response, I think, in, in talking to the eighty, the, the the chief deputy district attorney, is that you have like there are a cluster of super bad actors that create an enormous amount of havoc in you're the inner city. You're, you're talking about African Americans yeah. in the inner city. Yeah, and but there's a no snitch culture. And but not, none, of none of that was brought up. None of it was brought up. It's cross-cultural. Look at Nigeria. I mean, look at the violence. No matter where look you look at the Nazis. I mean, Seth, Seth, like I said, comparable. I made this How? point. How is it not comparable? There's 81 major cities in America. Like I said, New York's the biggest and ironically Madison, Wisconsin is the smallest metro area in America. All of them have one thing in common. Black homicidal violence. It's not Amish people, Jewish people, Quakers, Shakers, Mennonites, Methodists, Mormons. It's not kids from Greenfield or Glendale or Greendale. Every morning when I turn on Fox 6, we need to wake up and really deal with the issue and stop pretending 
and looking everywhere else except what's going to solve the issue. But you don't think there's historical roots to what's set no. that up? No, I think at this point, no. when you have successful okay. African Americans, not I mean just financially successful, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, socially, financially, and academically successful men who are older, who've been through life, they think this is bullshit. They know that it's as easy as, you know what, if I'm a young African American male, and let's be honest, many of them have kids, not with just one gal who isn't their wife, but multiple gals. We all know this is true. Well, and but poor, I'm not supposed to say because I'm a white guy. Poor, but, and poor white community, the marriage rates are down too. Okay, okay, I mean, right. I, but I, we I'm have stable. to triage this. I'm, if we both walk into the ER, I have a swollen ankle, and you've got five bullet holes, they're taking you first. The urgency's there, correct? Right. Okay, in the African American communities, 80% of the homes are without a father, and if the father's in the home, he might not be married to the woman, so he's not bound to that woman. There's simply that, that's on sperm donors. So, that's a huge so it's, problem. It's a tough way to say it, but it's, it's true. I mean, There's I, simply... I think a lot of black it's leaders about personal exactly. responsibility. Moral ethics. You know what, honey? Ethics. You pulled me into this party, we're both drunk. I'm not going to do this because four minutes yeah. of fun isn't worth raising a kid or not raising them for 20 four, years. <laughs> four that's, and a half, huh? That's reality. But I, I guess, so I guess what I would say <laughs> is that why can't it be a both end? Why can't there be why can't there be an emphasis on personal responsibility yeah. but with an admission around the around the systemic inequality. Because it's easy what, it, what, is the, what is the system? What is the system? Is the system? So like for, well, hold on, hold so on. For example, like, like, the, like what I'm talking about, like the, the racial contracts in short. Right? So like, it's more, or, or, so one subdivision said no black people no, unless... No, it's all of them. I mean, all of the, that's representative of most of the North Shore. Like the, the North Shore, you couldn't move into most of these communities if you were black unless you were a servant, which is a mind blower. A servant. But you, yeah, you were like a butler. If you were a butler, you could be there. That's right now. Like, like so there are subdivisions no, saying... not now. No, no, not now. That all, with the Fair Housing Act in the 60s, you couldn't enforce those codes anymore. Okay. Yeah, but like right now, what is the system right now? The so, s systemic so, system of institutional racism. You know what I wanted to talk So what, so, so that... So what... So what happens is if like no black people are allowed to move into the most affluent, connected neighborhoods for like generations, it seems like that's just an inherent disadvantage. It's an inherent disadvantage around education, around healthcare. They're skipping school more than whites. What do you mean? What do you mean? But their schools are terrible. Why, why are all these immigrants from Central Asia and Russia and East Asia doing so well when they have higher poverty rates and lower per capita incomes? Because their household incomes are higher than whites because they're pooling their resources to get ahead. Okay, so, so that, that's the whole personal thing. responsibility. I, I don't want to wiggle out from personal well, that's responsibility. The whole thing. That's, that's I, the I don't know that it's the whole. I don't know why it can't be both. I don't know why it can't be. There's no evidence of systemic racism. But I don't. There, there's I don't, none. What is the evidence of it? So, like, it's it is. It, get your email. This is undermining your whole thesis right now. The fact that we're here together with with the panel that we had discussing the issues. Is, is kind of not supporting your thesis. This is a bunch of people who are completely filled with guilt that they may ever, at some point in the future or in the past, have been perceived as racist. No, I, I don't. That, that's more of like a the personal concern. <laughs> okay, well, I don't have a personal concern. You don't see that in most other populations in the world. This is something that's very, very common in the white suburban American culture. Is this fear of being perceived as being not open-minded? or not being completely accepting of every single group on the planet. Well, that's just the left everywhere. I mean, I don't think that's suburban. Or I don't think that's, that's just sort of like, it's like the chief sin on the left. But why did not, it become that? I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, it's new. I think, I think that it's the sign, I think there's a realization that, I mean, I, I would disagree. I think that there's evidence around, like if I was gonna say, if I get your email, the guy who put this on is getting a PhD in some of these same issues. I don't remember exactly what it's on, but like healthcare. So they do these they they isolate they do these studies around pain medication prescribed for Black people, and they're able to like isolate in an empirical way for race in these cases, and they they see this. 
Black people get prescribed less pain meds than white people. That's just one little example. Well, I mean, I mean, considering like drug addiction is a big deal, maybe that's not always a horrible thing. Well, I mean, so and we live in a culture that over prescribes meds. I was prescribed bullshit when I was a kid. This is also. I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's a good thing. This is also. There's also a culture where you don't know how much it's going to cost when you go into the hospital. They bill you retroactively. And we're also doctors and insurance companies don't operate across state lines. We should I don't, have another conversation. But, but, about but it's that. very hard to say anything. I would have to read this study, I guess. The American healthcare system, because the American healthcare system is not something one can really study in the it's, macro. You see how, like, no also pointing out a, a statistical disparity is not necessarily evidence of no, it's discrimination. Not, it's not. You'd have to so show I mean, a pattern. Yes. Have to I would show, have to look close, more closely at that study. You'd have to show a whole pattern. I would say the biggest example of racism in America is the voting patterns of African Americans. It, it is unlike any other group of people in America. African Americans vote in an unbelievably tribal manner. It's like 95% Democrat. So the inner cities and, and, get and, high and taxes. Barack Obama received and then 98% of the black vote. There's no group where there's... Come on, you gotta give him that. I mean, he's black. Like, but he give... isn't. His father is from Kenya, his mother is from Kansas. What does that mean, he's black? Well, in some ways, we're all black. I mean, we all have African genes in us. I mean, we all, if we go back far Modern enough, humans, well, not all. The Neanderthals were... Uh, yeah, humans. Humans. Modern Homo sapiens come from East Africa. That's yeah. correct. We're but, all African, right? But there were a lot of selection pressures making us all quite different. Yeah. Okay. Agreed. Okay, we agree to that. Okay. So the fact that African Americans vote the way they vote is systemic, tribal, in-group preference. We'll just put it that way. But can you blame Hillary, them for sticking together as a block? Do I blame if, them? If they've, the oh, Democrats Hillary, have ruined every can, major city can, in the United can States. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Do most African Americans like Donald Trump as president? No. Okay, but but the fact that they wouldn't vote for a postmenopausal white lady like Hillary Clinton at the same rates they vote for Barack Obama is the reason why Donald Trump won. Right. Okay. So okay. So their tribal voting patterns have resulted in a political situation they're not happy with. What is that? That looks kind of ridiculous, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's time to go home. Yeah, I gotta go. We I gotta, gotta lock up my family. Okay. Alrighty then. Okay, guys. Hey. Subscribe, bitch.